So welcome back CIS 255. A um, number of things uh, to cover and to talk about today. Uh, we have our next uh, challenge, which is uh, Project uh, 1, Part 2, Dynamic Stack of Integers. So in essence, we said that before, we were able to create a stack which had a, a number of useful uh, member uh, function, set of member functions, so that we could push data, extract data, find out if the stack is empty or full. And uh, that was not very convenient on the user side of things, simply because, uh, you know, it's like an additional responsibility on the user side to check for, uh, you know, the condition that the stack is empty or full. So that's not very good. Uh, in general, if we try to draw a bit of an illustration to this, then we can say that our data model for our stack was that once we instantiate an object like this, it's sort of like fixed in size. It becomes a brick which cannot be stretched or otherwise modified. You just get this array of integers inside and that limits your capacity. If the user pushes more and more data in the individual elements that are available in that internal array of numbers, and of course we also had this, uh, the idea of a stack pointer, which was basically keeping track of the top of the stack at all times, uh, you have a very limited ability uh, with this thing. So here's new mo data model, the proposition inside this new homework as assignment is to create a different stack, right? So when it gets created in memory, again, it has the, uh, uh, you know, it has some data needed to, to maintain its state and all that. But the, the most, um, you know, essential change from what we have currently is to create a dynamic array allocate a block of integers dynamically at runtime. Basically say, okay, give me this chunk of memory right now from the free store, uh, asking the system to provide dynamic memory and use it. But still keep track of the, you know, at some, at some place here, keep track of the capacity and say, okay, this is our capacity. And automatically, if the capacity is reached, so we're will fill it up with the data, then the proposition is to say, mm, okay, what we could do next would be to allocate another perhaps larger chunk of memory dynamically, okay, temporarily have access to both, right? Then copy all the data over, like every single element, move it over to here, so all this data becomes filled in right here, this is free, this area is free for us to use, and then tell the operating system to free up memory, uh, essentially, uh, essentially tell the system we no longer want to use this memory anymore, take it away from us, and point and, and also sort of like uh, repoint uh, the, 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 the piece that keeps track of dynamic memory over here. So essentially, perman permanently, uh, for the next uh, period of time, point to the new block of memory, right? And again, uh, in terms of keeping track of capacity, making sure that we know where our capacity is, from here to here. And again, if they push more data, the process should repeat. We allocate even bigger chunk of memory, and again, move the data over and get rid of previously used memory and keep on just growing and growing and growing. So there is no way to really uh, right now in this particular proposed model to scale back. So perhaps, you know, to observe that if they push the elements from, the, uh, if they pop the elements from the stack and so the, the logical size of stack uh, drops down, um, you know, we, we really don't care. Once grown, it's just going to occupy that much memory, right? 
So, I mean, again, other mechanisms could be built into it so that maybe the memory, this memory could be then um, reduced in terms of how much memory we actually use uh, dynamically, which may be a, 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 an okay mm, idea, but typically mo once allocated in, in many situations, you don't want to deallocate uh, unless the entire object goes out of scope and you no longer really be using this object uh, uh, overall. So that's the proposition. So the question is, how do we work with this? By the way, any questions about this? Yes. Does it really create a new array? Or does, does yes. The array storage area will be brand new. It new will, memory. It will move all that. No overlaps. It's but it will move all the it will move all the data. And move all the data from the old place to the new place. It takes a lot of time. Why does it do it that? Mm, that's just the way memory is available to us. It's 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 a, it's a physical resource. Absolutely. Even see, even see yes, like that's exactly the way it is. You allocate and deallocate. The way you manage what you have allocated or deallocated is up to you. Who do you allocate? Us? I will show you. I am about to show it. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, this is really brand new chunk of memory that we acquire every time we need to grow our stack. It is brand new, and that's why we really have to copy the data over. Okay. On the, on the older machine, so it, it would use the hard drive or something instead. And have stuff there if it mm, have yeah, well, you're talking more like virtual memory to swap information on the drive. Yeah, it well, it we're talking matter. about s relatively small objects here, but yet, theoretically, it could grow to a huge piece of data. And today, today it probably most of it's in memory. Most of it, given the gigabytes of memory that we have, it's not going to happen. So let me uh, test, uh, make sure I save it.